still having nightmares about that night. The night when we saw something we shouldn't have. Something that defied all logic and reason. Something that made us question our sanity and our safety. It was supposed to be a fun trip. A few friends and I went on an overnight hike in the Rockies behind our little town a few years back when I was in high school. We had done this before many times. We knew the trails, the views, the best spots to camp. We were experienced hikers, not some amateurs who got lost in the woods. Our camping site was pretty far up there, near the peak of the mountain. It was getting dark as we reached a clearing that offered a stunning view of the valley below. The spot we were at was nestled in a grove of trees, secluded from the wind and elements. It was perfect. We decided to stop there for the night. The four of us built a little fire and ate dinner, then just talked for a few hours. We shared stories, jokes, memories. We laughed, we joked, we had a good time. We were happy, carefree, oblivious. Then, all of a sudden, my friend Sam leaped forward and doused the fire with our emergency water, plunging us into complete darkness. Needless to say, the rest of us were pretty pissed as there was no reason for him to do this. Sam, what the hell? I yelled, trying to find my flashlight in my backpack. Sure, 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 he hissed, grabbing my arm and pulling me down. Be quiet, be quiet. He sounded terrified. Like so scared he couldn't even speak or move. His grip on my arm was tight, almost painful. I felt a surge of fear in my chest. What was going on? The rest of us managed to get a few words out of him. He told us to look up on the ridge where we should have been camping at. He said he saw something. Something that made him freak out. It was pretty far up, so it was kind of hard to see at first. But then, as my eyes adjusted to the darkness, I saw it too. And that sight will haunt me for the rest of my life. There was a fire. A big one, like a bonfire sort of thing. Around the fire were several figures moving in a slow circle. They were humanoid, but not quite. They had arms and legs like people, but something just seemed different about them that I can't really explain. Almost like the limbs were too long and skinny, or something. But maybe not. Anyway, these figures just moved around the fire in a really slow circle, over and over again. My one friend, Jake, claimed he could hear them singing something, but I don't remember anything. I was too focused on the one standing off to the side, a little ways away from the fire. He was leaning with his arm on a tree branch above his head, watching us. He was the one who scared me the most. He had a face. A human face. But it was twisted and distorted, like it had been burned or melted. His eyes were glowing red, like coals. His mouth was wide open, revealing sharp teeth. He looked like he was smiling. A wicked, evil smile. He looked like he knew we were there. He looked like he wanted us to see him. He looked like he was waiting for something. It really creeped us out, but we were too scared to move or make a sound. We just lay there, on the ground, hoping they wouldn't notice us. Hoping they would leave us alone. Hoping it was all a bad dream. We must have fallen asleep at some point, because the next thing I remember was waking up to the sound of birds chirping. It was morning. The sun was shining. The sky was blue. It was a beautiful day. We got up and looked around. The fire was gone. The figures were gone. There was no trace of them. It was like they had never been there. We tried to convince ourselves that it was just a hallucination. That we had eaten something bad, or breathed in some smoke, or something. That it was all in our heads. But we knew it wasn't. We knew what we saw. And we knew we had to get out of there. We packed up our stuff and finished off our hike to the peak. We didn't talk much. We just wanted to get it over with. On our way down, we passed the place where we saw the figures. We decided to check out the camp, just to make sure. It was completely deserted. 
It was obvious that there had been a fire, and there were footprints everywhere. But there was something else. Something that made our blood run cold. Inside the fire pit was a small mound of charred animal bones. Probably chipmunks or squirrels. And next to it, a pile of four or five rodent skulls that had been burned. They looked like they had been used as some kind of ritual offering. Or a snack. Creepy, right? But that wasn't the worst part. The worst part was where the one figure had been standing. The one with the twisted face and the red eyes. There was blood. Not a lot, but enough to be of concern. Enough to be creepy. Enough to make us wonder what he had done. Or who he had done it to. And then we saw the tree branch he had been casually leaning against. It was well over any of our heads, and I'm over six feet tall. That would mean that in order for the figure to lean against it like he did, he would have to be at least seven feet tall. Or maybe he wasn't leaning. Maybe he was hanging. We didn't stick around to find out. We ran. We ran as fast as we could down the mountain, back to our car, back to our town, back to our homes. We didn't stop until we were safe. Or at least, we thought we were. We called the fish and wildlife rangers and told them what we saw. They said it was probably just a bunch of kids messing around and not to worry about it. They said they would check it out and let us know if they found anything. They never did. They never called us back. They never told us what they saw. They never told us what they found. They never told us anything. Maybe they didn't find anything. Maybe they didn't see anything. Maybe they didn't believe us. Or maybe they did. And maybe they wished they hadn't. We never went back to that mountain. We never went hiking again. We never talked about that night again. We tried to forget. We tried to move on. We tried to live normal lives. But we couldn't. We couldn't forget. We couldn't move on. We couldn't live normal lives. Because we knew. We knew there was something out there. Something that wasn't human. Something that wasn't natural. Something that wasn't right. Something that wanted us. Something that followed us. Something that haunted us. Don't believe me if you don't want to. But there is something out there. Something that lurks in the shadows. Something that waits for the right moment. Something that strikes when you least expect it. Something that will get you. Something that will get me. Something that will get us all. There's something about the dark and the silence that makes me feel alive. My friends and I used to go on late night hikes every weekend, exploring different trails and enjoying the thrill of the unknown. One of our favorite trails was the one that led to a clearing with a big gnarled dead tree. We called it the Tree of Doom because it looked like something out of a horror movie. It was our landmark, our halfway point, our destination. One night, we decided to go on that trail again. It was a clear and moonlit night, and we were in high spirits. We joked and laughed as we walked, shining our flashlights on the trees and bushes. We didn't see anyone else on the trail, which was normal for that time of night. We were about to reach the clearing, when we saw something that made us stop in our tracks. A figure, dressed in black, was climbing up the tree of doom. He moved so fast, it was almost unnatural. He reached the top in seconds, and perched himself on a branch. We stared at him, dumbfounded. Who was he? What was he doing there? Was he a hiker, a prankster, a lunatic? We got a bit closer, and shouted at him. Hey, man, are you okay? He looked down at us and smiled. His teeth were yellow and crooked, and his eyes were wide and wild. Yeah, dudes, just lost my hat up here, he said in a raspy voice. He pointed at his head, where a black beanie was still on. He didn't seem to notice or care. He just sat there, staring at us, with a creepy grin on his face. We felt a chill run down our spines. Something was wrong with him. He was not normal. He was not human. 
We backed away slowly, trying not to provoke him. Okay, well, good luck with that, we said nervously. We turned around and ran. We ran as fast as we could, away from the clearing, away from the tree, away from him. We didn't stop until we reached the end of the trail, where our car was parked. We got in and locked the doors. We were panting and sweating, and our hearts were pounding. What the hell was that? One of my friends asked. I don't know, man, I don't know, another one said. We looked at each other and saw the fear in our eyes. We had just encountered something that was not of this world. Something that was evil. Something that was terrifying. We never went on that trail again. We never saw the tree of doom again. We never saw him again. But sometimes, when I close my eyes at night, I can still see his face. His smile. His eyes. And I wonder if he's still up there, waiting for his next victims. I was at grandparents' house late at night, and I had a nightmare there. All the lights were off and I heard something outside. Everyone was sleeping so I got up to see what it was. As I got inch close to look out the front porch window, the most horrifying man was smiling right into my face and I flip out. The scariest part was when I tried to yell, nothing came out. When I tried to wake people up, they just lied there and didn't wake up. None of the lights worked. I had to fearfully watch as him and another creepy guy robbed my house and planned to murder us. I ran to the kitchen and grabbed a knife, hoping to defend myself. But as soon as I turned around, I saw the man standing right behind me. He grabbed my arm and twisted it, making me drop the knife. He laughed and said, You can't escape, kid. We've been watching you for a long time. You and your family are our next victims. He dragged me to the living room, where his partner was waiting with a gun. They threw me on the couch, next to my grandparents and parents, who were tied up and gagged. They looked at me with terrified eyes, but they couldn't say anything. The robbers said they were going to kill us one by one, starting with me. They pointed the gun at my head and pulled the trigger. I heard a loud bang and felt a sharp pain. Then everything went black. I woke up screaming, covered in sweat. I realized it was all a dream. I looked around and saw that I was in my own bedroom, in my own house. The lights were on and the clock showed it was morning. I heard my mom calling me from downstairs, saying breakfast was ready. I got out of bed and ran to the bathroom. I looked in the mirror and saw a bruise on my arm, where the man had grabbed me. I felt a bump on my head where the bullet had hit me. I touched them and felt a surge of pain. It was a nightmare, but it felt so real. How could this be? Was it a coincidence, or something more? I was scared and confused. I didn't know what to do. I decided to call my grandparents and check on them. I dialed their number and waited for them to answer. But instead of hearing their voices, I heard a familiar laugh. It was the man from my nightmare. He said, Hello, kid. Did you enjoy your dream? Well, guess what? It wasn't a dream. It was a warning. We're coming for you. And this time, it won't be a nightmare. It will be reality. We started to hike again, hoping to reach the next hut by noon. We were hungry and cold, and the fog was still thick. We didn't talk much, just followed the trail markers. We had a map and a compass, but we couldn't see much of the landscape. We felt like we were walking in a dream. Suddenly, we heard a loud bark from behind us. We turned around and saw the same black dog we had seen the day before. It was running towards us, growling and snarling. We panicked and grabbed our hiking poles, ready to defend ourselves. But the dog didn't attack us. It ran past us, as if it was chasing something. We looked ahead and saw a figure in the fog. It was the man we had seen with the dog. He was wearing a dirty coat and a hat, and he had a rifle in his hands. 
He was running away from the dog, looking terrified. He saw us and shouted something we couldn't understand. Then he fired his gun at the dog, but missed. The dog kept chasing him, and they both disappeared into the fog. We were stunned. We didn't know what to do. We decided to keep hiking, hoping to get away from whatever was going on. We wondered if the man was the one who had stolen our food, and if he was a hermit or a hunter or something else. We wondered why the dog was attacking him, and if it was rabid or trained or wild. We wondered if we were in danger, and if we should call for help or stay quiet. We wondered if we would ever get out of the fog. We hiked for another hour, until we reached the next hut. It was a small wooden cabin, with a metal roof and a chimney. It looked cozy and inviting. We knocked on the door, hoping to find someone who could help us. But there was no answer. We opened the door and walked in. The hut was empty. There was a fireplace, a table, some chairs, and a few shelves. There was also a radio, a phone, and a generator. We thought we had found a safe place to rest and contact the authorities. But then we saw the blood. It was everywhere. On the floor, on the walls, on the furniture. It was fresh and wet, and it smelled horrible. We followed the trail of blood to the back of the hut, where there was a small bedroom. We opened the door and screamed. There was a body on the bed. It was the man we had seen with the dog. He was dead. He had been mauled by the dog. His face was torn apart. His chest was ripped open. His limbs were bitten off. He was barely recognizable. The dog was nowhere to be seen. We ran out of the hut terrified. We didn't know what to do. We didn't have enough food or water to hike back to the previous hut. We didn't have enough signal to call for help. We didn't have enough courage to stay in the hut. We were trapped in the fog, with a killer dog on the loose. We felt like we were going to die. We decided to try the radio, hoping to reach someone who could rescue us. We turned on the generator and the radio, and tuned to the emergency frequency. We heard a static noise and then a voice. It was a woman. She sounded calm and professional. She said, Hello, this is the Alpine Rescue Service. Do you need assistance? We were relieved. We grabbed the microphone and said, Yes, yes, we need help. We are a group of six hikers, and we are stuck at the Vallejo Gardner Hut. There is a dead body here, and a dog that attacked him. We don't have enough food or water, and we can't see anything in the fog. Please, please, send someone to get us out of here. We waited for a response. We heard the static noise again, and then the voice. It said, I'm sorry I can't help you. You are on your own. Good luck. Then the radio went silent. We tried to call again, but there was no answer. We realized we had been pranked. We realized we had been set up. We realized we had been trapped. We looked at each other, and we knew. We knew we were not alone. We knew someone was watching us. We knew someone was playing with us. We knew someone was hunting us. We heard a loud bark from outside. We heard a gunshot. We heard a scream. We knew it was too late. I am fond of hiking, especially in the woods near my college. It was a way to escape the stress of exams and assignments and enjoy the beauty of nature. One day, during my freshman year, I decided to go for a hike with a neighbor, a girl who lived in the same dorm as me. We had met on the bus a few times, and she seemed nice and friendly. She said she liked hiking too, and agreed to join me for a short trail. We took the bus to the nearest stop, and then walked towards the entrance of the woods. It was a sunny afternoon, and the air was fresh and crisp. We chatted casually as we walked, getting to know each other better. She told me her name was Sarah, and she was studying biology. I told her I was majoring in computer science, and we joked about how different our fields were. We reached the trailhead, 
and saw a sign that said it was a moderate difficulty hike, about two miles long. We decided to give it a try, and started following the path. The woods were quiet and peaceful, with only the sound of birds and insects. We admired the trees and flowers, and occasionally stopped to take pictures. We felt relaxed and happy, and I thought maybe this could be the start of a friendship, or even something more. We reached a fork in the road, and saw another sign that said the left path was shorter and easier, while the right one was longer and harder. We decided to take the right one, since we were feeling adventurous and confident. We continued walking, and noticed that the trail became steeper and narrower. The woods also became darker and denser, and we saw fewer signs of other hikers. We started to feel a bit nervous, but we didn't want to turn back. We hoped that the trail would end soon and lead us back to the main road. We walked for another half an hour and still saw no sign of the end. We also realized that we had lost our cell phone signal and couldn't check the map or call for help. We started to panic and wondered if we had taken a wrong turn somewhere. We decided to speed up our pace and look for any landmarks or clues. We hoped that we would find someone else on the trail or at least hear some traffic noise. We walked for another fifteen minutes, and then we saw something that made our blood run cold. It was a gray van, parked on the side of the trail. It looked old and dirty, and had no license plate or windows. It looked like it had been there for a long time, and was covered with dust and leaves. We had a bad feeling about it, and wondered who owned it, and what they were doing there. We decided to avoid it and walk on the other side of the trail. We hoped that whoever was inside wouldn't notice us or bother us. We walked past the van and tried not to look at it. We quickened our steps and prayed that we would find the exit soon. We were almost past the van when we heard a car door slam. We turned around and saw a man coming out of the van. He was tall and muscular and had a shaved head and a beard. He was wearing a black leather jacket and jeans, and had a tattoo on his neck. He looked angry and menacing, and had a knife in his hand. He saw us, and smiled wickedly. He started to jog towards us, and shouted something we couldn't understand. We were terrified, and didn't know what to do. We thought he was going to kill us, or worse. We looked around, and saw no one else. We had no weapons, no phone, no help. We were trapped and alone. We had to run, or fight, or die. Sarah screamed, and ran towards her house. She was closer to the exit than me, and had a chance to make it. I followed her, and hoped that the man would chase her instead of me. I felt guilty, but I was too scared to think. I just wanted to survive. The man saw Sarah running and changed his direction. He ran after her and ignored me. He was faster than her and was gaining on her. He was only a few feet away from her when he suddenly stopped. He looked at me and frowned. He seemed to recognize me or remember something. He hesitated and then ran back to his van. He got in and drove away. He left us alone and alive. I was stunned and confused. I didn't know why he stopped or what he wanted. I didn't know who he was or how he knew me. I didn't know what he was doing there or where he went. I didn't know anything except that I was lucky to be alive. I ran to Sarah and hugged her. She was shaking and crying. She was in shock and so was I. We didn't say anything, we just held each other. We were glad to be alive, and together. We walked to her house, and called the police. We told them what happened, and gave them a description of the man and the van. They said they would investigate, and asked us to stay calm. They said we were brave, and lucky. They said we should be careful, and stay safe. We never found out who the man was, or why he attacked us. We never saw him again, or his van. We never went hiking again, or took that trail. 
We never forgot that day or that fear. We became friends and then more. We helped each other heal and cope. We supported each other and loved each other. We moved on and lived on. But we always wondered, what if he came back? What if he found us? What if he finished what he started? We never knew, and we never will.